Good day, everybody. <clears throat> Today I'm going to talk about Hamas. According to Wikipedia, the translation first it says this acronym HMS was later glossed in the Hamas covenant by the Arabic word Hamas, which itself means zeal, strength, or bravery. Next, I'm going to say what the Bible says about Hamas. It says God, and, this is from BibleTools.org. God encapsulates the reason for his terrible judgment against Edom into a single word, violence. In Hebrew, this word is Hamas. Believe it or not, so strikingly similar to the name of the Palestinian terrorist, terrorist organization. So, Again, the word is violence. Now I'm going to talk about a brief history of Gaza's 75 years of, according to this, whoa, but war. According to Reuters, Gaza is a coastal strip of land that lay on ancient trading and maritime routes along the Mediterranean shore held by the Ottoman Empire until 1917. It passed from British to Egyptian to Israeli military rule over the last century. Again, it was held by the Ottoman Empire. It wasn't called Palestine. Okay, it passed from the British to Egyptian to Israeli military rule over the last century and is now a fenced-in enclave inhabited by over 2 million Palestinians. Here are some of the major milestones in its recent history. 1948, end of British rule. As British colonial rule came to an end in Palestine in the late 1940s, violence intensified between Jews and Arabs, culminating in war between the newly created State of Israel and its Arab neighbors in May of 1948. Now, this is important. They didn't have that many people in the Gaza Strip back then. Tens of thousands of Palestinians took refuge in Gaza. Tens of thousands. How many numbers can that be? So tens of thousands of Palestinians took refuge in Gaza after fleeing or being driven from their homes. The invading Egyptian army had seized a narrow coastal strip 25 miles long, which ran from the Sinai to just south of Ashkelon. The influx of refugees saw Gaza's population triple to around 200,000. So that means in 1948, they had about 65,000 people. Let me ask you this. If conditions were so bad in that area, why do they have an upper a population of 2 million people? If they had about a little over 65,000 people in 1948, why would they deliberately overpopulate the area? Maybe did they think that there was strength in numbers? Why on earth would people increase their population if the situation there was so bad? Why subject your children and grandchildren to suffering? Only 60,000, now 2 million. A little over 70 years. So in the 1950s and 1960s, the Egyptian military ruled. Egypt held the Gaza Strip for two decades under a military governor, allowing Palestinians to work and study in Egypt. Armed Palestinian Fayadeen, many of them refugees, mounted attacks into Israel during reprisals. The United Nations set up a refugee agency called UNRWA, which today provides services for 1.6 million registered Palestinian refugees in Gaza, as well as for Palestinians in Jordan, Lebanon, Syria, and the West Bank. 67 war and Israeli military occupation. Israel captured the Gaza Strip in the 67 Middle East War. An Israeli census 
that year put Gaza's population at 394,000, at least 60% of them refugees. Again, from 1948 to 1967, less than 20 years, they grow from about 65,000 to 394,000 people. What do you think? 60% of the 394,000 were refugees. What do you think Reuters means by that? So it says, with the Egyptians gone, many Gazan workers took jobs in the agricultural construction and services industries inside Israel, to which they could gain easy access at the time. Israeli troops remained to administer the territory and to guard the settlements that Israel built in the following decades. These became a source of growing Palestinian resentment. The settlements. In 1987, the first Palestinian uprising Hamas formed. I just want to mention, in biblical times, when the Jews were freed as slaves, they passed through the southern part of Israel before they came in, and they were too afraid to enter Israel at the time. There were 12 tribes, and Moses picked 12 people, one from each tribe, to be spies in the land of Canaan, which eventually became Israel. Ten of the spies came back with bad reports. Two spies came back with good reports. Therefore, they were afraid to go conquer Israel, even though God had performed many miracles for them to leave Egyptian slavery. The Amalekites lived in that area of the Gaza Strip. So when the Israelites were passing in the desert below Israel, going east toward what is now Jordan, which is towards Moab and Edom, the Moabites and the Edomites, that was the territory ruled by Esau, which is Jacob's brother. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The Jews came from Shem, the Canaanites came from Ham, the Egyptians came from Ham, and Japheth, maybe Japanese came from Japheth, but that's another story. So it says, 20 years after the 67 war, the Palestinians launched their first intifada, or uprising, it began in December of 1987 after a traffic accident in which an Israeli truck crashed into a vehicle carrying Palestinian workers in the Gaza's Jabalia refugee camp, killing four. Stone-throwing protests, strikes, and shutdowns followed. So an accident caused stone-throwing protests, strikes, and shutdowns that followed. Here's a picture of Palestinian schoolgirls returning from home, home from classes, past a line of Arab men being frisked by Israeli soldiers in the Gaza Strip in 1986 after a Jewish man was stabbed and seriously injured. So why would they stab? Why would the people from Gaza stab, or one guy stab an Israeli man? Okay. Seizing the angry mood, the Egyptian-based Muslim Brotherhood created an armed Palestinian branch called Hamas with its power base in Gaza. Hamas dedicated to Israel's destruction and restoration of Islamic rule in what it saw as occupied Palestine became a rival to Yasser Arafat's secular Fatah party that led the Palestinian Liberation Organization. 1993, the Oslo Accords and Palestinian Semi-Autonomy. 1993, the Oslo Accords and Palestinian Semi-Autonomy. Israel and the Pal Palestinians signed an historic peace accord in 1993 that led to the creation of the Palestinian Authority under the interim deal. Palestinians were first given limited control in Gaza and Jericho in the West Bank 
Arafat returned to, the, to Gaza after de decades in exile. And the picture of PLO Chairman Nasser Arafat shakes hands with Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin, a U.S. President. Bill Clinton stands between them at the White House, September 1993, according to Reuters photographer Carrie Heshorn. According to this, the Oslo process gave the newly created Palestinian Authority some autonomy and envisaged a state would after five years, but that never happened. Israel accused the Palestinians of reneging on security agreements and Palestinians were angered by continued Israeli settlement building. Hamas and Islamic Jihad carried out bombings to try to derail the peace process. So there you have it. That's when the bombing started. Again, I'll read that again. Hamas and Islamic Jihad carried out bombings to try to derail the peace process, leading Israel to impose more restrictions on movement of Palestinians out of Gaza. Hamas also picked up on growing Palestinian criticisms of corruption, nepotism, and economic mismanagement by Arafat's inner circle. In 2000, the second Palestinian Intifada. In 2000, Israeli-Palestinian relations sank to a new low with the outbreak of the second Palestinian Intifada. It ushered in a period of suicide bombings and shootings, attacks by Palestinians and Israeli airstrikes, demolitions, no-go zone, and curfews. So, there were suicide bombings by the Palestinians inside of Israel bus bombings, discotheques, coffee shops. I remember my cousin telling me she was inside one of the coffee shops when a bomb blew up. I don't know if I remember she said she was two doors down or she was in the same coffee shop and her air drums blew out. She was deaf for a few days. Many innocent Jewish people were killed by these bus bombings. Now, why on earth would people who want to be free or want a good life, why would they go out and kill innocent Jewish people? by bus bombings, discotheque bombings, coffee shop bombings. Here is a picture of Palestinian police exchange fire with Israeli soldiers during clashes near Netzrim Jewish settlement in the Gaza Strip, October 2000. It says one casualty was Gaza International Airport, a symbol of the thwarted Palestinian hopes for economic independence and the Palestinians' only direct link to the outside world that was not controlled by Israel or Egypt. Opened in 1998, Israel deemed it a security threat and destroyed its radar antenna and runway, for, uh, runway a few months after the 9-11 attacks on the United States. So Israel deemed that airport a security threat. So it says another casualty was Gaza's fishing industry, a source of income for tens of thousands. Gaza's fishing zone was reduced by Israel, a restriction it said was necessary to stop boats smuggling weapons. Here is a picture of an elderly Palestinian man that looks at the remains of his house after it was destroyed along with five others by an Israeli bulldozer near the Jewish settlement of Netzarim in the southern Gaza. From what I understand, when a when the Israelis destroy a house, that house was used by a family member who committed a terrorist act by killing somebody in Israel. So a terrorist attack by the Palestinians killing Israelis. This is why they destroy people's homes. 2005, Israel evacuates its Gaza settlements. In August 2005, 
Israel evacuated all its troops and settlers from Gaza, which was by then completely fenced off from the outside world by Israel. Palestinians tore down the abandoned buildings and infrastructure for scrap. The settlement's removal led to greater freedom of movement within Gaza, and a tunnel economy boomed as armed groups, smugglers, and entrepreneurs quickly dug scores of tunnels into Egypt. So the pullout from the Israeli settlements out of Gaza also removed settlement factories, greenhouses, and workshops that had employed some Gazans. <coughs> In 2006, is isolation under Hamas. In 06, Hamas scored a surprise victory in Palestinian parliamentary elections and then seized full control of Gaza, overthrowing forces loyal to Arafat's successor, President Mahmoud Abbas. Much of the international community cut aid to the Palestinians in Hamas-controlled areas because they regarded Hamas as a terrorist organization. Palestinian Hamas official Ismail Haniya assists Hamas co-founder Ahmad Yassin in taking a phone call in Gaza City here in 2023. Excuse me, 2003. So that's the founder in the wheelchair, and that's uh, Ismail Haniya who was a leader of Hamas. So it says Israel stopped tens of thousands of Palestinian workers from entering the country, cutting off an important source of income. Israeli airstrikes crippled Gaza's only electrical power plant, causing widespread blackouts, citing security concerns. Israel and Egypt also imposed tighter restrictions on the movement of people and goods through the Gaza crossings. Ambitious Hamas plans to refocus Gaza's economy east away from Israel founded before the even started. Viewing Hamas as a threat, Egypt's military back leader Abdel Fattah al-Sisi also took power in 2014, closed the border with Gaza and blew up most of the tunnels. Once again, isolated Gaza's economy went into reverse. So here you have it. Even Egypt saw Hamas as a threat. Conflict style. Gaza economy has suffered repeatedly in the cycle of conflict, attack, and retaliation between Israel and Palestinian militant groups. Here is a picture of Palestinian pedestrians and a motorcyclist commute along a road between the ruins of houses which witnesses said were damaged or destroyed during the Israeli offensive in Beit Hanun town in the Okay, read more. I'm not going to do that right now. Before 2023, some of the worst fighting was what's happening now in 2014 when Hamas and other groups launched rockets at heartland cities in Israel. Israel carried out airstrikes and artillery bombardment that devastated neighborhoods in Gaza. More than 2,100 Palestinians, they say, were killed, mostly civilians. Israel put the number of its dead at 20, uh, 67 soldiers and six civilians. I don't know about you, but I don't trust the statistics 2,100 Palestinians were killed. Who said? Palestine? The Palestinians, I mean? The Gaza? Hamas? Who? Hamas, who says they want Israel destroyed? Again, remember, under Arafat, they wanted a two-state solution. Under Hamas, they just want to destroy all of the people of Israel. Big difference. Israel wants peace. Hamas wants to kill. So the surprise attack, while Israel was led to believe it was containing a war-weary Hamas by Providing economic incentives to Gazan workers, the group's fighters were being trained and drilled in secret. Here, the Palestinians break into Israeli side of Israel-Gaza border fence after gunmen infiltrated areas of southern Israel. October 7, 2023, Hamas gunmen launched a surprise attack on Israel, rampaging through towns, killing hundreds 
and taking dozens of hostages back to Gaza, Israel took revenge.